Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, giving us 15 minutes of your day. We appreciate it. Uh, if you are brand new, uh, click like, click like, share, subscribe, uh, get notified when there is a new update. We generally do the update uh, Monday through Wednesday and then again on the weekend. So thank you very much once again for uh, spending a couple of minutes of your day and hopefully everybody is having a great weekend. So let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about some things, right? So you have rising uh, interest rates, not a good thing. Uh, rising oil prices, not a good thing. You got the UAW strike, not a good thing. You have a potential loom of a government shutdown, not a good thing, right? These are all things along with a whole bunch of data, PCE and CPI and PPI and core and this, that, and the third, and Michigan sent them in and every other piece of data underneath the sun. and the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 uh, put in its worst month of 2023. As a matter of fact, it's they came um, just shy of a 10% pullback from the highs to almost, dare I say, call this a bear scenario. I don't want to say it, but dare I say it, yes, I shall. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? A lot of stuff going on. Uh, obviously, the economy, as much as the government tells you how great it is and everything is okay, you can see it, right? You can see it from uh, just a lot of stocks, consumer cyclical names. Uh, you can see it with retail. Nobody's spending money, and you can see it by the stocks uh, that we're talking about. Like, look at retail, right? You got the targets of the world. Again, this is nobody spending money. You got the coals of the world. Nobody's spending money. When you look at consumer cyclicals, again, these are stocks like Procter & Gamble, right? You're talking about the most basic necessities, shavers, right? Colgate palm olive. You're talking about soap, right? Dishwasher detergent. These are basic things. So as much as the government's selling, everything's all right, right? Everything's all right. Inflation, yeah, it sucks, but you know, it's under control. You can see what's going on in a lot of names uh, that are trending in the wrong way in the market if you are a shareholder of those names. And this is one of those eye-opening things that when you look at the overall broad spectrum of what was going on in the market, you can see the breadth is terrible. Despite some days, you can see the Nasdaq could be up 150, 200 points. When you look at the dynamics of the broader picture of what's going on, the market is uh, not great. Uh, when you look at last week, okay, you have still uh, a lot of names just getting hit. You know, the Nasdaq 100 has been now uh, below the 50-day moving average now for about two weeks. We talked about levels here. We'll talk about a very, very uh, important level they got rejected. We'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, but right now, the market is really, you know, giving permabulls or investors not a lot to smile uh, upon yet. Now we are entering uh, the fourth quarter. Monday will be the first day of the fourth quarter. Traditionally, the fourth quarter has been strong, right? Traditionally, you have, uh, you have uh, the Thanksgiving rally flowing into the Santa Claus rally, flowing into the January effect. Does it have to happen? Nothing has to happen. Just all, all you got to do is look at uh, the end of 2021 spilling over the 2022. We know uh, all those traditional things kind of go out the window when there is doubt in the economy. There's doubt uh, in a political, uh, geo, you know, geosynthetic uh, type of, of, of uh, uh, type of environment, uh, maybe uh, political, which we're going to see in 2024. So the bulls, you know, got to, you know, they have to do, you know, they have to get some work in. They really do. They have to get some work in. Uh, all these beaten up groups that we just talked about, uh, the, you know, the consumer cyclicals, the retailers now, you know, struggling uh, technology names, although again, they will have their day in the sun throughout the week. Uh, the bulls better step up. And, and uh, we'll talk about some levels here uh, in a second. Uh, S&P 500, right? Uh, dip below uh, 4,300. That's been an area that a lot of traders have been watching. Uh, again, we continue to close uh, below, even though we had a couple of attempts uh, in the last uh, two days, Thursday and Friday, to get above it, kind of re even reclaim back the correlated five-day moving average. They couldn't do it. They got faded on gaps. And well, again, we'll talk about the importance 
of understanding levels uh, in one second. So what's going to get this market up, right? It's a, it's a rhetorical question. I don't have the answer to that. I don't think anybody has the answer to that. Um, I Again, uh, I look for a, a very, very uh, standalone scenario. You know, if, if it quacks like a duck and, uh, you know, looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, I promise you it's not a rhinoceros. So if, if you think the market is weak, it's weak, right? That's the whole point. It's weak. And we've seen so much data now whether it's financial or price-driven data that suggests that gap ups are being sold, uh, flat opens are being sold, you know, gap downs and go, you know, downs and goes are, are being sold as much. So again, not a great landscape entering uh, entering uh, Monday, the first day of the fourth quarter. But again, as we say every single day, anything could happen. Anything does happen. That's what makes uh, the stock market the greatest reality show. Uh, that's not on television. So let's see, you know, let's talk about where we start, uh, where we start the week. Uh, where we start the week is the S&P, again, below the 4,300 level. And now we are building for about the 50. We've been long gone below the 50. We have to concentrate the big two levels coming up on this week for the bulls are they have to defend 4,264. Okay. That is uh, the 150 day EMA. And then they have to defend uh, 4,238. That was the low of the, of the week which stopped the right at, uh, what was that? It stopped the right at the, um, I don't even know what that is, but it's whatever it is, whatever supply uh, demand zone it is, uh, that 42.38 is definitely going to be the line in the sand because any close below 42.38 on the SPX that we go down to 4,200, again, the bulls don't, I mean, the bulls that definitely don't want that. Uh, for, for the upside, right? For the bulls to kind of get their tushies in motion, maybe start something good, we need to reclaim back at least the 4340 level. That is the 10 day moving average. Again, if you've been watching these workshops or uh, watching this religiously, you kind of know the 10 day moving average is the birth of the trade. Uh, the 50 day moving average is the birth of the trend. That's why we always emphasize the importance of the 50 day uh, moving average. When you go down to the NASDAQ 100, uh, NASDAQ 100 got rejected that we talked about that level uh, for the last few days, right? That 40, that uh, 362, 363 level, it got rejected there perfectly. Again, I'll show you the pivots here uh, in a few minutes, but it got rejected perfectly. We gapped up on a pretty big move. We were up 150 points on the NASDAQ. Maybe it was even more. Maybe it could have been 200 points on the NASDAQ. We gave it all back, guys. That's not a good thing. This is what happens when you don't know where your supply zones are and they get rejected at the top of the range. And if you look at what happened uh, on Friday, you see this big gap up, right, on data and just an absolute avalanche of selling uh, that followed despite uh, the market actually closing up, the Qs actually oh, closing up to 26 cents. They're up almost four or five bucks uh, for the day. So again, not a great sign. Uh, the bulls need to defend, okay, bulls need to defend 357. 357 uh, is going to be uh, the five-day moving average. Again, if you are brand new to the channel, the five-day moving average, at least for me, is the shortest term sentiment to see who has control literally of the short term. So 357, the bulls need to defend. The bears need to defend uh, 363, right? So 363 to the upside, uh, 357 to the downside. That is your ranges to start the week for bulls and bears and obviously act accordingly uh, based on confirmation of uh, this channel. So going into uh, going into Friday's uh, Monday session, a uh, couple of story stocks, right? You got Tesla coming out with uh, numbers uh, over, I think it's on Sunday. They're coming out with delivery numbers on Sunday. Uh, we talked about in the beginning of the week, uh, Tesla was due for a dead cat bounce. Da, 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 da. Tesla got the big dead cat bounce, right? Got it for, went from 234 uh, all the way up to uh, 255 in the last few days. So the debt cap balance is there. The problem is it got rejected off the 50-day moving average on Friday, which again, which is not good. Uh, but delivery numbers are due out on Sunday. I think it's either Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. I'm recording this video uh, Saturday evening. So, um, you know, again, obviously uh, the stock is going to react to whatever those delivery numbers are. Uh, Deutsche Bank on Friday already cut their estimates uh, for their deliveries, uh, blame it on uh, the China uh, Chinese uh, shutdown of their plants. Uh, they don't believe uh, that the numbers, even if they miss deliveries, is going to be uh, effective in the stock. We shall see. I have no idea. Do you? Does is anybody really going to have to guess what's going to happen if they actually miss deliveries? Again, we don't know. But that from the surface point of view, 
uh, the Tesla did get rejected off the 50-day moving average after a dead cat balance that we talked about on Monday uh, and Tuesday. So going into this week uh, again, uh, we start the, the you know start the week uh, again until you, until the bulls reclaim big levels. You're going to see a lot of value continues to the downside. But you know to our credit as traders, we do find those you know those nuggets right those diamonds in the rough uh, that do perform very very well despite. Uh, what's going on in the broader market. So let's talk about Friday's pivots. Uh, obviously, uh, what I wanted was, if you, if you guys remember Thursday's video, we had a nice little rally and we reclaimed back the five-day moving average and we were talking about it on in the, in the webinar on Thursday night. And I was like, well, hopefully we don't get a gap up because what I think is going to happen is if we, can get a, if we can get a gap down, I think shorts will get trapped uh, and they will, they will squeeze them into the previous day's range. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, right? Uh, so this is what, what kind of the notes I wrote here. The last thing we wanted today was a gap up and we got the gap up. So all our pivots that we were looking for to make their measured moves, they already made their moves pre-market, right? So for example, uh, I really like Tesla at 247 for a potential move to uh, 5354. It gapped up to 5354. So again, we were very, uh, there was nothing there for us. So uh, the meat of the bone is gone. Let's stay patient and try some, find some value. So we did. We definitely found some value here. Uh, Rivian, a very, very strong move today. Uh, Rivian 2358 uh, needs to build. That will confirm the 50-day moving average. Here was Rivian. So it took out the 2358. Beautiful move here. Went up about a buck considering how lame the rest of the market was. It, now it's striking distance, right? It's striking distance of the September highs. If it confirms the September highs, you might get a push to 25. But listen, a dollar move on a $20 stock considering how the market got pulled, it was pretty impressive. Uh, CLVT, I like this thing. Guys, watch this thing for next week. Uh, CLVT, it's a slower mover name, but you guys know how much I love uh, these earnings slow plays, right? This is going to be, but if this thing starts confirming the bottom of the channel here, this thing could start getting hit, you know, getting hit down to the earnings low. So guys, watch this thing. Watch this uh, CLVT uh, below last week's lows for a potential move down uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, PLTR 1635 needs to build, you know, rallied about, you know, 50, 60 cents, not a big move, but it took out 1635 and went all the way up to 1680, about a 50 cent move, nothing crazy there before it reversed course like everything else. And here was the big one here, right? Here was the big one here, uh, 6280s. Again, the, the part of um, the PS60 works, the PS60 theory is there's the average C, the natural pivots, the top of the range, the bottom of the range, there's also what we call the sneaky pivot in the middle of the ranges that we can take advantage of. And then there's another aspect of the PS60 theory that we have bounce areas, right? Bouncing off demand and then rejections off supply. And this was a very, very big rejection. Uh, 6280s, right? That's the Q's potential rejection into supply. Guys, that was literally, uh, literally the high of the day. Uh, 6280s, uh, the high for the day was 6290s, and the you know the net the Qs just got destroyed. They went down uh, about five bucks uh, from the rejections. Congratulations for you guys uh, who took a great great move here. Uh, you know we, we you know, here we were celebrating the 61 move. It went down all the way down to 57. So uh, great job there. Uh, other than that, you know again it was a pretty solid week. Um, you know we're looking for uh, some names to definitely follow through this week. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names uh, that I am watching uh, for this week, and then I'll let you guys continue with your uh, weekend. So we talked about CLVT. Guys, watch this uh, SLNO. Uh, definitely one of the prettiest charts out there. As you can see here, it's gotten rejected at the top of the range uh, two out of the last five days. Keep an eye on SLNO. If it finally gets above uh, the top of the range here, maybe this thing uh, wakes up. GameStop, right? GameStop. So GameStop... If you guys, uh, if you guys notice, uh, you know, there's a movie coming out or it already is out. It's called uh, Dumb Money. I personally have no interest in watching it. You know, as much as uh, I love the actors playing it, you know, I, we, we already went through it. You know, it, it, does anybody not know the story of GameStop, right? Listen, when it comes on Netflix and it comes on Amazon Prime, yeah, I'll watch it. But to go out of my way, uh, anyway, they, a lot of people thought they were going to run up the stock ahead of the movie. That didn't happen. They came out. And a point that I forgot the guy's name is uh, the new C CEO. Was, I forgot what the guy Ryan Ryan Cohen I believe his name so, something like that, right? So 
that didn't, you know, that didn't get the stock up. Guys, watch the bottom of the range here on GameStop, right? Take a look at this, guys. If this thing starts losing the Bollinger Band here, it's things going to get lower. So they couldn't rally the stock into the movie. They couldn't rally the stock appointing a new CEO. Oh, what's going to get the stock to rally? You follow what I'm saying? So, guys, watch the bottom of the range here of GameStop, and um, you know, let's watch Tesla. You know, let's watch Tesla. Let's see how, uh, let's see how it how it uh, reacts to those delivery numbers. Are those delivery numbers baked in? Uh, if they do miss, we'll see, right? We'll see. Again, I have no idea. You have no idea. It's all guessing. Uh, to the upside, I definitely want to watch uh, if it reclaims back the 50-day moving average. And to the downside, I want to see what happens when they lose the 10-day moving average. So there's a couple of names we're definitely watching. We're definitely going to see how the market uh, sentiment and opinion and what's going to go on here with the government over the weekend. Because keep this in mind, it's Saturday night. By the time Sunday rolls around, you have your Tesla numbers and you have a potential uh, potential resumption of the government or a shutdown of the government. Uh, might be in the cards as well. So we don't know, right? We don't know when it's going to take place. So guys, have a great, great weekend. God bless everybody. Stay humble. Stay patient. Stay living, right? Unless we, unless we, uh, unless we are underground, it's already a good day. So smile, learn to love life, and life will love you back. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all. In the